Hey guys, welcome to Mastering Tips and Tricks presented by Blend Mastering. Thanks for all the awesome feedback we've had on our last few videos. I hope this one will be as entertaining for you guys. Um, I know November's finished, but the Mo Movember lives on strong, so please just refrain from commenting on that in the comments, as I've had it mentioned a couple of times already. Alright guys, um, we've got a new song in today. It's a bit of a banger. We'll give it a listen right now and see what you think. Alright, cool. We've actually got a reference track in today as well. That's what I sort of like to do. So we'll have a listen to that too, and that's going to really shape how we master this song. Uh, this is Cash Cash Tritonal Remix, I think. Oh, no, Brooklyn Remix, original. Alright, cool. Um, that's going to give us a bit of an idea on how we do this. Um, first of all, obviously you can hear the second one's mastered and compressed and limited and etc. But we really need to think in terms of EQ, because those things don't matter until we've done our EQ. So firstly, I'm hearing a whole lot of sub bass that's going to need to go. We'll have a listen again so you guys can think about that. Listen to this, like 50 hertz. Alright, cool. And it's all right, there's a fair bit of difference. First of all, you guys know how much I love this tape machine. We're gonna whack that on. I've already got it set how I absolutely love it. It just breathes, it gets pumping. I love it. Alright, um the next is a bit of EQ, linear phase for this low end. Another classic, look, it's got so much low end, um, it hadn't been rolled off in his project, obviously. So the first thing we're gonna do, there's a lot of noise. Down to 32. Get rid of it, we don't want it, and then we're going to move on to above 32 because that's a real problem as well. All right, so we'll just have a bit of a listen and I'll have a bit of a play around. That's starting to tame it there. Brainworks, I really like that. We'll also... Yeah, again, since we've got a reference track, that's just what I'm trying to match right now. So I think that's probably matched that up pretty well. The stereo image, that is. Um, mono lows, open highs, that's sort of the vibe it's got going on. Um, Alright. Now more low ends got to go. Sorry. Alright, we'll grab a couple of, a couple of points here. Um, yeah, low. Yep, 50 again. Yep, um, tighten that cue up. So we don't want to be hitting 80 and 100 too much. This is really the subs, because 80 and 100 is quite good. If you listen to the reference track, it's got a lot of punch around that area. So if we start carving that out, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. All right, let's try this.
Alright, that's sounding a lot better now. I know some of you guys might be like, Oh, Tom, hold up, man. I think you've taken out too much of the subs. But I think with what's, come, what's to come still in the processing, I think that's going to probably be about on point. Alright, next we've got the Slate Virtual Mix Rack here. Um, what we've done this time is actually a bit different to usual. We've got 15k, and instead of boosting it to give it a sort of glassy upper boost, we've actually cut 15k due to the reference track being not that bright in the sort of 15k area. So therefore the the guy, the producer, not wanting it to be too bright in that 15k area. It also is a little bit harsh. I'll show you. I'll show you all this in a second. Um, 60 hertz, a little bit more of a dip. He's just slammed it. Um, and then a nice big boost in the sort of, well, I'm guessing that's about 2 to, two to 10, 12k there. Um, it's a nice algorithm, this one. I just want to bring back a bit more of that sizzle, hiss, in a good way. Because <laughs> that's sort of what the reference track has. It's got a lot of punchy lows, and it's got a fat sort of that area, frequency lead. So, alright, we'll have a play. Alright, cool. That's our EQing done now. I'm really liking it. I think it's coming together a lot like that reference track. It, this guy's a good producer and the song's mixed really well. Pretty well, so that that helps. Alright. Alright, next step is compression. We've got it EQed now. It's sounding amazing. Alright, we'll get into the virtual bus compressor rack here from Stephen Slate. Um, Alright. Let's have a play. Alright, you guys will notice that those meters aren't reading properly on the video for some reason. Now I think this is really, this presents a really interesting opportunity. Actually listen. Because I know we always get caught up with meters and how much it's metering and I know I'm exactly the same. When you close your eyes, it is a completely different experience. So you guys, I think you're a bit lucky. You can just listen, don't, you're not looking at what the compressor's doing. You're hearing what it's doing. Now, I think that's awesome, but um, we'll keep going on now anyway. My bad. That was a... That was a... What I had it on. All right. Um, we'll start again. That's what I sort of want to do here. Alright, cool. Now the kick and snare in this song is absolutely driving it. Um, I don't want to get rid of that too much, but I do think it's a bit in your face at the moment. Every time that kick hits and that snare hits, I cringe a little bit. It's just coming out a little bit too much. So that's what this is really going to do. This is just getting that snare and it's pushing it back. And I think that's, that's great. Alright, be prepared for this to get about 8 dBs louder. Um, obviously, that would never normally happen, but the track he submitted was so quiet, we've actually added 8 dBs to it. So, if you if you put a... This is another thing why you can't just sort of do what you see on the internet. If you're like, hmm, I see Tom's done this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy these settings. I'm going to put them on my own song. You know what's going to happen? 
your song is going to get destroyed because on almost every song, another 8.7 dB of gain is going to be <laughs> so much too much. But <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, Slate, FGX, Limiter, love it. Let's go. Alright, before I went into the FGX, I gave another little bit of a comparison. Obviously, our reference track's still a lot louder. We haven't finished our limiting just yet. Um, it's also got a lot more body between 502k or something like that. That's where there's nothing too much I can do. Like, I can boost those frequencies, but it's not going to be the same as having instruments in those frequencies from the start. So that's where I can sort of draw the line between a reference track and the track I'm working on is when, sure, I can make it, I can represent those frequencies in the song, but it's not going to be good because I'm adding it in EQ, whereas in the reference track, it's there in the different pads, in the different leads. It's not the same as me adding leads, it's me adding frequencies, so there's no point in me doing that. This song's original, so we're going to leave it original. We're just going to make it same volume, same sort of sound and feel, and I think we're getting there. Right now, maybe we'll get into this slate limiter. I can hear where so we're having a couple of computer issues on the stream here but um that's just giving it 2 dB more what it's done it's got in here I love this limiter cuz it's it you can use it so well it's just not another digital tool that's just all about smashing and smashing and smashing this is bringing back the dynamics so it's going a bit easier we've got I have it around 3 between 2 and 3 depends how well the song is mixed oftentimes if you have it up higher on a poorly mixed song, you can't get any level. But you want it up higher because you want dynamic range. All right, um, transients, not too many. The low punch, I tried bringing it up. All it's bringing out is sort of the, the high presency thump of the kick. So I don't really want that. That's just the compressor settings, compressor settings. Just taking a little bit more off here before it gets through the limiter. Um, just set that there. That's about that. Now we're going to check levels. Now, <laughs> the song he has given me as a reference is so loud. All right, that's getting into negative 3 dBRMS, and that is just, that's crazy. You can hear it in, his, in the highs of that song. The highs are a bit of a, bit of a mess. They've been smashed by a limiter, obviously, to get it that loud, and they're really pretty cringeworthy. But if that's the sort of style he wants, look, he's going to like how it sounds. And there's a whole massive thing, dynamic range, loudness wars. I write a few blogs about it, so I'd, I'm probably not going to get into too much detail there. But as far as I'm concerned, I talk to my clients. I, I inform them about it beforehand. But if they still give me a reference track that is smashed and I send them back a song that sounds really great, really nice with lots of dynamic range, all they're going to tell me is to do it again. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do it now, 
And another interesting thing I have also written a blog about is the the loudness matching algorithms that are in like Beatport has it, Spotify has it, iTunes Music has it, iTunes Store has it. Um, SoundCloud doesn't, might be getting to be the only one. I think that's a positive step for music because I also have to take into consideration when I'm mastering, if I leave a song with no dynamic range and I upload it to Beatport, it's going to sound like shit because it's going to get brought down by the by their loudness algorithms and that's really bad because when someone previews it on beat previews it on beatport and it sounds bad they're they're not going to buy it so i've got to keep that into consideration but as this is a remix and it's just going up on soundcloud we don't have to worry about loudness algorithms but um check out more of my blogs or hit me a message if you want me to tell you more about that because it's really interesting Uh, just as a little experiment that's actually unity gain so it's the same level but i just for you guys at home i want you to hear that that there that's that's too much we'll just quickly when it got to sort of 2.2 i was thinking to myself that sounds good it's not doing too much damage it's fattening it up and there's no real negative effects. But I think 3.2 is sort of, it's getting a bit too much. But this guy wants it loud, so we're going to do this again. Have another little listen. Alright, now I'm actually not gonna quite not gonna make our song quite as loud as the reference track purely because that last DB RMS is destroying the high frequencies so badly. So we'll do a comparison. I think it's gonna sound pretty similar. I think that's a very similar loudness level. It's not quite as punchy, and there's not as much distorted high mid lead sound like they've got in theirs, which I'm not I'm not 100% happy with. If I was their mastering engineer, I wouldn't be wouldn't be loving it. But um, yeah, I think that's sounding really good. The bass has come back a lot, and I I know from prior experience with my EQ, as soon as you start doing this sort of stuff, the bass does come back a fair bit. So. I wasn't too worried when I scooped out a fair bit, and I think that's quite a good level. I'm sure if I used a, an analyzer, it would tell me that the kick drums on both these songs are hitting the exact same. I reckon about nine, minus 16, minus 17 dB, and that's that's balanced, so that's what I wanted. I want it to be like the reference track. So, All right, thank you guys heaps for watching. Um, I've had a lot of fun shooting this video and showing off another great song that we have here. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe share if you think your friends will get something out of it i know you all know a lot of producers so just shoot them a message with it in and i'll and then shoot me a message too because i'd love to hear from you and if anyone is happy enough to share this video i'd love to hear from you and we can have a bit of a chat all right thanks heaps guys uh this has been mastering tips and tricks with blend mastering see you next time Bye.